soccer, lesson number two. So we start with our bell ringer and review lesson number one, where we covered uh, dribbling and passing. And so the bell ringer was one of the two types of dribbling. What part of the foot do you use for each type and why? And so students were discussing, and if you recall, we did two types of dribbling. One was speed dribbling, and then speed dribbling you only use the laces of your foot to advance the ball because your feet aren't aligned forward so you can run faster. Your feet aren't out of position when you touch the ball with your laces. But if you were to touch it with the inside of your foot, your foot would be out of alignment and it would slow you down. So it wouldn't be very effective for speed dribbling. And then the second kind of dribbling was close control dri dribbling. And in that particular technique, you're using all surfaces of the feet because you need to be able to change directions at any time based on what your opponent gives you. So there's your bell ringer. You'll also notice we added a couple uh, objectives. All right, I can shoot for accuracy, I can shoot for power, and in today's lesson we're going to cover those two skills. Okay, shooting for accuracy. All right, most of the time in the game, the goal is to get close enough to your opponent's goal where you can have an easy shot to score for your team. And so when you get to this position, very important to remember that you don't need a ton of power, that you really just need to place the ball in the appropriate spot. So in this drill, we piggybacked off the drill we did last class, we were dribbling around cones. When we get to the final cone, instead of turning around and dribbling back to our line, we're now gonna work on shooting for accuracy. And so the students in the class are gonna pick one panel or one specific spot on the wall or one map, and if they hit that particular map, they did a good job. And so I'll demonstrate what they kind of were supposed to be doing. Speed dribbling to the cone. Make one move around the cone. They get close. Take a little touch off to the side. Open up. Hit the spot. And it's just a hard pass. Aim specifically at a specific spot in the goal so that they're accurate and they give their team the best chance to score and hopefully win the game. Okay, shooting for power. So now it's a different skill. All right, same mechanics as far as your hips and your body goes. You're still gonna wanna have an angle to the ball, all right? But when you strike the ball, you're gonna hit it on this metatarsal bone. It's about halfway down into the inside of your foot. All right, a lot of people will tell you, just strike the ball with your laces. And that, it's not that it's wrong, but the power is gonna come from the impact made by this bone right here. And to strike it properly, you have to keep your hips open, but you also have to lock your toe down straight. Protect you from injury, but it also opens up that surface of your foot. So as you strike the ball, you look behind it, okay, you have the angle for that part of your foot to come into contact with the direct back of the ball. If you do it properly, the ball will come off your foot very, very quickly with a ton of velocity and will have very little to no spin. All right, so we're gonna, again, we're gonna, we have two cones. We move the last cone back away from the wall this time to give them a little more idea of what it's like to shoot for power because you're gonna be farther away from the goal. So when you're shooting for power, it's more about contact and power, less about accuracy. So we do the same drill. We make a move around cone number one then we take a little touch to the dominant side, hopefully get good contact and shoot for power. So I'll try to demonstrate. Speed dribbling, pull. Move the ball around the cone, pull it back. Take your touch to one side. Contact, and you want very little spin on the ball. 